hard. All right. Good morning and welcome to Coffee Talk. Yay. Bye. <laughs> and Carolyn, welcome back or welcome forward to another episode. I'm excited that you wanted to come chat again. Thank you. Oh, it's always fun chatting with you, Judy. Um, I love that you're that you do this and it's just a conversation. It's just there's kind of no agenda. Um, it's great. Yeah, well, we can thank the lockdown for that. <laughs> Because um, I had I had a different podcast that I was like doing for something and this I was just like, who wants to chat and get a coffee and chat so that we can connect. And it was so much more fun. Yes. And I'm on to water now. Um, I got up super early this morning and rode my bike in the freezing cold fog <laughs> so that um my daughter could ride across the freeway with somebody. Oh, kind of you. <laughs> and it got me going. So, yeah. It's not quite uh, uh, bicycle weather yet where I am. No, it's it's pretty darn cold here too, but not as cold as you. Yeah, although, you know, we've had a mild winter. It's all right. Uh, but I've ha I had to get those little... Ice tracks, they're called. These these things that you put on your bottom of your boots so that oh. have kicks to walk in the ice. So it, it was, you can walk with confidence. Yeah. Super new kind of superhero. That's exciting. So tell me, um, tell me about the things that you've been up to with the ease with relationships that you were talking about since this is valentine's week and oh, i'm sure it pings a lot of people there's some people who love it and some people who hate it yeah well thank you um i've been a relationship done different certified facilitator for a while um but i haven't really done a lot with it because i mm. always thought i was terrible at it you know, I'd be terrible at relationships and everything. And I, <laughs> you know, we're all, we all think we're terrible at different things. Right. Um, and I realized that I have a lot of information, a lot of experience and have a lot of fun with it. And so we have a relationship with everything in our lives, with our pets. You see my cat is contributing with his little snores and mm -hmm with our family, with the people we meet on the street, we have relationships with everybody, people we work with. And so what if they could be more fun? <clears throat> what a concept, Julie, hey? Having yeah. fun. You know, I like how, how it's expanded to everything and everyone. And like, um, I look at the things that I have, the car and the clothes and the, and the stuff in my house. And I love these things so much and I take care of them and they look brand new, even though they could be really old. Yeah. And it's just like, like, Oh, look at you. It's like, well, it's vintage. <laughs> yeah. And the joy of being alive is, you know, it, we contribute to that. I, I love my little car. Um, we bought it. It's a 2014 Honda Fit, bright red, and it has done so well for us. And um, every time I'm in it, I thank it for what a great job it's doing. I pat the dashboard and like, whoa, you didn't, you know, your tires, winter tires are doing well. And I just thank yeah. it. it. Makes me happy. Yeah. And, you know, every molecule has consciousness. You know, it's so true. I know when I take my car through the the drive through wash, it's like I feel all the tingles in my body. <laughs> it's so, so fun. fun. <laughs> yeah, we can't wash it. I did get it washed when it went up to three degrees, which is <laughs> I don't know, that's three Celsius. So that because if you get it caught washed when it's frozen, of course then you can't open the doors. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. 
Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, exactly. The, the, the clothes you take care of, your pets. I mean, I'm so grateful for my cat. He was my mm -hmm. husband's cat and my husband passed away. And so I asked Jax to um, be a comfort and entertainment for me. So we can, I mean, we, we, yeah, we have relationships with everything. So let's enjoy that and create mm -hmm. more of it. And he's hilarious. And, you know, like, <laughs> I, I have to wash my face um, more often than I used to, because he just smushes everything over my face. Like he used to oh do it with his beard. And I'm like, I'm such a cat person too. I just love cats. <laughs> So yeah. like, what would you say to people who don't have that, who like have a contentious relationship or they don't like their job or the people they work with and like, it's not ease. How would you facilitate or invite other possibilities? Well, I have a lot of experience with that because uh, um, my marriage was kind of up and down like many. And then I learned somebody many of the access consciousness tools and and also just it it completely changed the way I looked at things and I would get really angry and then I realized it it wasn't mine mm. he was angry at himself because he wasn't happy about something and you know we we think that people that we're relating to are, are say annoyed with us or irked or something or other and what if it was actually um not directed at us but really directed at themselves and they don't know what else to do with it and I, I really learned that through my marriage and and by the last few years we would just you know somebody would you know say something and then we'd look and we'd go and then we'd giggle because it was like we knew that we were making it up, that it wasn't real. We were taking it on from somewhere else. And yeah, it it's that idea that, well, can I really talk about access tools here? Yeah. It's the idea that 99.999% of our thoughts, feelings, and emotions are not ours. So the next time you're getting like, ah, Stop and go, oh, is that actually mine? Who am I being? Whatever. And it'll just change the energy. And truly, I, I cannot tell you the difference in my relationship with my husband in particular and everything else when you do that. But you just stop. It can be a nanosecond. Go, <gasps> or, you know, I got good at saying, oh, I'll be right back. I got to pee. And, you know, and then asking myself questions and um, being in gratitude. Yeah, it's so interesting to this, the, the fact that none of the stuff is ours. I mean, it really is a fact. And so many people don't know that. Um, even beginning a relationship, like when you're going on a first date and you leave and you're like, oh my God, I like them so much. Or it's like, wait a second, do you like them or do they like you? Like what is going on? Or when you break up and you're like thinking about them all the time, are you thinking yeah. about them or are they thinking about you? And it's usually the other way around because it wouldn't stick your attention. Yeah, that's very, uh, yeah, true story. But I, I just learned so much and I'm so grateful for the access tools um, for giving me way more fun and ease and joy. Um, and um, yeah, and we talk about anger being the awareness that there's a lie somewhere. Mm. And that made a big difference to me too. I know. Mm. I know you only know me as this sweet, lovely, middle-aged Canadian woman, but I really used to get really angry. <laughs> and then I learned yeah. it wasn't mine. And in fact, it wasn't even my husband's directed at me. It was his directed at him because he hated many things about him. And that and that just 
there was so much stuff that we could change and unravel and just be then in the space of gratitude and joy. Yeah. It's possible. But it, it, yeah. it's not. And like, so, so some people might think, well, that's going to be boring. Personally, I like peace, <laughs> but some people like the drama. So sure. what would you say to them? Oh, good question. Well, is it boring to have fun? <laughs> is it boring to, instead of being annoyed and in different rooms in your house, is it boring to create an amazing meal and then dance afterwards? Um, you know, like, hmm. I can't, uh, it, it was boring being annoyed all the time. It, yeah. <laughs> so sad. What a great <laughs> question, Julie. Huh. I'm trying, like, I'm really trying to, you know, get, get questions that other people might have because you and I, we could just sit here and just like be happy in the peace. <laughs> Not <laughs> every <laughs> <laughs> and one of the things that I heard Gary Douglas, who's the founder of Access Consciousness, say is um, if you're present, you cannot be bored. Mm. So if in any relationship, if you're present, you can't be bored. Right. If I'm present with my cat. He's so funny. And he's so sweet. And he started asking me in the middle of the night to get under the covers. And he just stands there and I can hear him purring and I lift the covers and under he goes and he snuggles up and I'm like, okay, that's really sweet. I'll have to wash my sheets more frequently, but that's okay. <laughs> but being, yeah, so being <laughs> present with anything or, or a piece of jewelry, you know, these earrings wanted to be worn today. Mm -hmm. I open my jewelry box and I like ask who wants to play. And that's not boring. That's fun. I agree. Yeah. So I wonder like the people that the people that are constantly doing distraction, maybe it's like, what are we avoiding mm. by the distraction that we're choosing instead of being present and having fun? Good question. What are you avoiding? Huh. And it's interesting. I've been um, talking with my mom who's 88, I think she is. And she thinks she's in her 60s still, you know. <laughs> so if any one little tiny thing goes wrong, um, it it's like, how do we fix it? How do we change it? Um, and I'll, I'll try to offer her something like just, you know, be present and ask your body and, you know, relax. And she's, her point of view is if I relax, something bad will happen. Oh my. Which is really interesting. Like who knew? Yeah. So she has to stay on this, like what's wrong or something bad will happen. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? It, it is. I know uh, one of my sisters is very much, she's got to make sure that she's got everything under control, anything that possibly could go wrong, she's got it in her mind's eye instead of just like relaxing. I know and we're so really taught not to, to relax, right? We're taught <laughs> we got to work hard. The harder we yeah. work, the better it will be. Yeah. I said, you know, what if, this is something that Gary Douglas said, what if the bad thing that's going to happen is that you'll be happy? <laughs> yeah. And she laughed and I'm like, well, it could be true. <laughs> well, and the whole thing about worry, which is this, this sort of thing, is that if you worry about something that's going to happen, I mean, there's like all different layers of that. But you wasted all that time. Why don't you just enjoy things? And if something bad happens, oh, well, mm -hmm. you'll deal with it. Have you not always dealt with it? Like, I know there was time when my husband was really worried about money. For for, And nothing different had happened in our lives. Mm -hmm. 
both kept creating and all that sort of thing. And I finally said to him, you know, have we ever not been able to pay the rent? I go out for lunch and buy, you know, do things like that. And he's like, uh, no. I said, so who does that belong to? Mm -hmm. Whose anxiety is that? Who's not wanting to relax is that? Mm -hmm. And it's not actually that relaxation piece. Also in relationships, right? Um, it doesn't mean when you relax that you do nothing. You can be relaxed and still do a ton of work. You can be relaxed and still really interact with people. But if you're in that uh, fight mm -hmm. or flight, then how can you possibly relate with ease? So true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Be a cat. <laughs> be a cat. Yeah. <laughs> do the yoga stretches when you get up <laughs> eat a little bit and then relax <laughs> yeah exactly oh but that um so that that point of view about having to work hard or having to always look for what's going to go wrong and all that sort of thing is is you know we talk about being an allowance you have to be an allowance of everyone and everything and um, especially mm -hmm. yourself. It might yeah. be harder to do than you think. But. It is interesting, though, to just speak it out loud, like what your crazy thoughts are, and then you can look at it and go, well, that's sort of a crazy thought. Yeah. You know, is that really serving me? Yeah. Um, what am I hiding from me? Or as you said, what am I avoiding with those crazy thoughts? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. And I think it's also easier to maybe have a conversation with someone who's not judging you um, so that you can see some of the things that you're hiding from yourself because you know, just doing it for yourself, you'll get distracted by anything. <laughs> yeah, and you don't, you don't always realize you're hiding things. Right. What I'm, what am I hiding that I no longer want to hide, no longer need to hide? You know? Yeah. We are such funny people. So interesting. Mm -hmm. Yes. And well, recently I've been um, recalling an incident many, many, many years ago when my brother passed away. He was in a motorcycle accident. And um, I've been writing out the story because it's part of just my awareness of being able to speak to entities. And it started a long, long time ago. And um, the, the download that he gave me of what had occurred and how like the moment he was out of his body, it's like all of that stuff, all of the angst, all of the points of view, all the everything goes away and there's this peace. And so somebody had recently said, you know, go back to a time like before, before you were you in this body. Like what, what being are you and get a sense of that. And it's like, wow, all this stuff that we buy into and, you know, the Insta reality and <laughs> all the things that you're supposed to do, it just, it's not there. There's such just space, allowance, peace, joy. What if everything we ever did was joyful and spacious and yeah, that's a great realization, great story. It's not a story, it's a... So it's like 
now when I'm driving and when I'm riding my bike and when I'm doing stuff and, and like, okay, let's not get hit by a car going on the freeway, <laughs> right? On my bike. But there's also this like expanded space awareness that, well, if that happened, I've had a good life so far. Yeah. You know, it's really strange. Yeah, it, and it makes everything easier and more relaxed. And when you are present like that, being present and aware is the greatest protection we have. And then you can you can have more gratitude for everything that is in your life. Yeah. You know, some people have a hard time cultivating gratitude. But if you knew that this was the last day you had, what would you be grateful for? Great question. Everything. And I would tell people that. And then they would feel worse when I was gone. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, he haunt them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I never returned her call. <laughs> yeah, we can manipulate people too, our relationships. Um, but really, that gratitude, that space... What if life was ease? What if the purpose of life was fun? That was a hard concept for me because I was like the responsible one, right? Me too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's more fun to have fun. <laughs> and but you're not irresponsible, are you? Not very often. She says that she drinks not skim milk in her coffee or something supposedly healthy. I'm drinking oat milk eggnog in my coffee. Mm. Some people would say that was irresponsible. I would say they're crazy. Pretty <laughs> <laughs> good, actually. Um, are you irresponsible? Well, I I would say... Probably not, but like, what is responsible, really? Yeah, and not just the ability to respond. Yeah, the ability to respond. Call me irresponsible. Yeah, um, it's like uh, this. You know, you put something in the oven, and you, you know, you put the timer on, and then you go and do something else. You know, and all of a sudden, I go, and I go to the oven and. 10, 9, 8 is all the thing. Like, I yeah. am responding. Yeah. And and the more you're present and aware and choose awareness, then you don't even have to worry about whether you're responsible and what this reality calls responsible. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun. It's fun. No more serious. No more <laughs> trying to get it right. Uh so and that applies to back to our original topic i love the that we're not that we're weaving around is that yeah in relationship you can your, your relationship with yourself is paramount because if you like when i again i'm referring to my husband but there were a lot of things about himself his body and everything that he really hated and that affected his relationship mostly with me but with uh, with uh, other people as well and and it was so made up right mm. he was six foot five you know he was tall dark and handsome and incredibly talented and creative and you know it, it's that his relationship with himself really colored many things less and less as time went by because well we were using the tools <laughs> but 
like, yeah, your relationship with yourself. If you hate yourself, how can you possibly enjoy somebody else? So true. And um, and in your classes that you facilitate, do you give steps or tools on how to undo that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, you, you know, in some of the classes you facilitate too, right? Mm -hmm. We taught in the Access Consciousness Foundation class. We've got tools for relationship and in the relationship done different class, we've got more tools. And yeah, it's fun. I'm so grateful. <laughs> so personal development should be like a thing that, that they teach in high school. <laughs> Absolutely. Imagine being taught when you're, say, 12 years old, that your thoughts, feelings, and emotions are not necessarily yours. Um, I mean, we know that. Well, my kids had that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's changed their lives, right? It, I mean, they grew up three and six years old. They grew up in access. And while they don't always, you know, lead with the tools, they they really know who they are and they don't get lost in other people's stuff for very long. They go, well, wait a second. I need to be by myself for a while. I need to yeah. go into nature or whatever and like regain themselves. What a gift. What a gift. Man, imagine. I can't imagine. Um, it is have... really cool to see. I yeah. didn't have that. <laughs> oh. I didn't have that, although I had a wonderful family and, and I, yeah, there's still a lot of angst mm -hmm. and self-judgment and, oh, I shouldn't have done that or, yeah. And now it's like, oh, maybe not my best choice. Oh, well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And what's right about it? Exactly. exactly. What if nothing you ever did was wrong? That question changed my life. Say it again for everybody out there. What if nothing you ever did was wrong? And I don't think I even want to expand on that. Yeah. It's a goodie. Well, I think that's a great place to end on that note thank you julie thank you for inviting me and playing and someday again we'll be together in person for coffee or dim sum sounds great <laughs> thanks thank you and thanks everybody for watching come and play at one of our things <laughs> or more <laughs> week, right stay tuned same bat time same bat channel <laughs> Right. Take Thanks. care. Bye. Bye.